Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Bean. We've got a great project today. Um, we are going to be working on our pirate pictures today. And we kind of have a two-part project today because not only are we going to be constructing our pirate, but we are also going to be constructing our treasure map. So I'm going to go over a few things that you're going to need to gather up from around the house. You are going to need some black construction paper. Just the large pieces should work just fine. If you don't have anything that big, you can always use the smaller ones, but yours should just be smaller. Um, you are going to need some Elmer's glue. You are going to need some white chalk. If you don't have white chalk, you can use pencil instead. Um, we're going to need some oil pastels and some watercolors. And you will also need a black, um, something that's a waterproof kind of marker. Fine tip is usually the best. All right, so I'm going to give you a second to gather those things, and we are going to be getting started. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. So we are back and we're going to get started today. We've got two inspiration parts today. Uh, my first one um, for our artist, we were talking a little bit about Leonardo da Vinci. And da Vinci was famous for many things. He was a scientist, he was an artist, he was just an outstanding person. And out of all of his work, this is probably my least favorite, but it kind of gave me my inspiration for our project today. And this is called Curious Grotesque Heads. because. I don't know if you've ever seen a pirate in person. You probably haven't. I don't think I ever have. But from the books that I've read and pictures that I've seen, they're not the prettiest people in the whole wide world, and they kind of remind me of these gross and grotesque kind of looking heads. So I kind of got my inspiration really drawing people sometimes the way you see them. And a lot of times in art, we get this idea in our head that it always has to be pretty and it always has to be perfect. And that's really not the case. Leonardo da Vinci taught us that you can actually draw things exactly the way you see them. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be pretty. And it's still considered art. So I kind of kept this in mind today as we were getting started on our project. And my other inspiration piece is, this is like my favorite book in the whole wide world, and it is called How I Became a Pirate. I love the illustrations. I love the story. It's just really cute. If you could get your hands on this book, fabulous, fabulous read and kind of also gave me the inspiration for my um, project today. As well as, I also have just found some random kind of pictures and articles about different pirates. This one happens to be about Blackbeard. And really just getting those, that kind of grungy, grotesque looking kind of face and the lines that you see on the face and those yucky teeth because pirates don't brush their teeth, which is very important and they just don't, they don't bathe and they've got this grungy hair and facial hair and really fun stuff to draw. So that's our inspiration point today. So we are going to kind of start there. Our pirate that we're gonna be starting with, remember we're only gonna be drawing from about the top of the head to mid chest. So you're not gonna see peg legs, you're not really gonna see hands because that's all gonna be down below your, your side of view. So. We're going to get started. Now, I told you in the beginning that you can use chalk or you can use pencil. Whenever I'm drawing on black paper, um, usually I like to use chalk because you can see it a little better. You can also erase if it doesn't work out the way you want it to. So I want you to think gross, grotesque kind of faces. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I do want you to kind of keep in mind some of those things that we have talked about before about the eye and you want to make sure that you get the shape of the eye and the iris and the pupil and those types of things. But this is one of those projects where you can really kind of go crazy and you can have those earrings and teeth are missing and you know scars and things like that. So be really, really creative. If you want to do a hat, you can do a hat, but you don't have to. So I'm going to kind of just get started quickly on my drawing. And since we've got several kind of parts of our project today, I'm going to work fairly quick. And remember that since this is such a grotesque kind of character, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
So I'm just going to start with some basic kind of lines, my face shape as I'm working. Remember, I'm going to make my eyes a little different than I normally do today. And normally, you know, I'd start out with that football shape. But this pirate, this particular pirate, is very sleepy, and he's not had some good sleep in days. So I'm going to kind of add some bags under his eyes. I'm going to make sure, though, that I get that pupil in there and the iris. Remember that your iris is the colored part of your eye, and the pupil is the black dot in your eye that controls the amount of light that comes into your eye. So I'm adding those things. Remember, I talked earlier about what we were going to be using to add color, and you're going to be using um, oil pastels. But um, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you are actually going to be drawing with glue today. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because it's pretty important for you to really draw big. You don't want to make those pupils in the eyes and the iris is too small because when you go back in there to draw with the glue, it's really, it's really hard to control the glue and how much comes out. So do yourself a favor and draw pretty big for this. So I'm coming in, adding my nose shape. My, um, my guy, I think, is going to have kind of a mangy mustache. But I'm going to make it kind of curl up. I just kind of think that would be fun. All right, so I have added in my mustache, and I'm doing lips. You could make yours teeth show. I think I'm going to keep my pirate's mouth closed, though. And I'm going to add some long kind of hair, because remember, they don't, you know, they don't go get haircuts and wash their hair and take baths and all that stuff that I really like to do. All right, so I've got my neck and shoulders. Now I also want you to keep in mind, remember whenever you start to put clothes on your pirate, that, you know, pirates often, when they would go and um, conquer a, or take over another ship, they would often, you know, steal the clothes of the people that were on board and things like that. So often their clothes were very tattered and torn not all nice and new looking and you know sometimes they they might have medals on them they might have stolen somebody's um, clothes that was in the military so kind of keep in mind some different things that you might want to add as far as what they're wearing and I'm gonna add I'm adding a little skeleton up on the top of my pirates hat and then I'm gonna come in here and just add some clothes. I think I'm going to do some kind of a collar and I'm going to do some kind of some tears in the clothing. Um, I'm, oh, I forgot up here. I was going to do some earrings on the ears. Add some really cool details like that. And I think he's going to have a scar here. Looks good. All right, so I'm just about done with my drawing. Now, normally, I would ask you to add something in your background. And that's okay if you want to add something in your background. Whatever you're going to add, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot of it. So whatever it is that you decide to add, um, you could either just do a color, or you might want to do just something kind of large in your background that takes up most of the space. So I think I'm just going to do part of maybe a pirate's flag flapping in the background. So I'm going to have just a little bit of it showing. So I'm just going to have maybe a little bit of that bone will show over there. Mm, one might come up and show right over here. The Jolly Roger, I think, is what they called that, whenever the skull and crossbones. All right, so I am just about finished. And adding a few extra little details, and then we are ready for the next part. All right, so I've kind of got something that looks like this, and I'm done with my chalk. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my Elmer's glue to trace over everything with my glue. Now, this is that part I told you it can get a little bit tricky. Take your time. I know that it's, you know, sometimes it kind of runs together. If you need to, you can wipe it off and start back over again. 
but if you'll kind of go slow, you want just kind of a nice, even bead of glue. And my kids, they just get so excited when they're doing this project that they're just like really, really fast. And I'm like, slow down, because you want a nice, even line of glue. You don't want all those little breaks in it. And the other thing is, is that you really have to take your time and kind of work a section at a time so that you don't end up, you know, maybe forgetting a little area. So you are going to continue to do this. And I'm going to kind of fast forward because I've got one that I've already done. You do know that once you get this done, you're going to have to let it dry. So it'll take, you know, overnight it should be dry and then you'll be ready to go on the next part. So I'm going to switch over and kind of show you what it's going to look like when you get it done and it's dry. So this is my next one and you can just kind of see the shiny reflection a little bit of my, um, my pirate and all these little lines here that are shiny are where the glue has dried. So we are ready for the next part which is going to be adding some oil pastel. All right, so we are ready to get started on the coloring part. We are going to be using those oil pastels, and I want you to really think about using them really dark. So I want you to really push down on them. Nope, not so hard that you break them, but hard enough that you get some really nice, good color. So I'm trying to decide what color I want to start on here. I think I'm going to start with a little peach. I'm going to start on that skin coloring. Now, one of the really cool things I think about um, oil pastels is that you can mix the colors. You don't, you can mix with crayons, but it's a little more difficult. Now, as you're working, you're gonna come across those spaces where you have got your glue lines, and you have two choices when you come to that part. You can either color over it, which I kinda did here, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second, or you can color right up next to it, leaving it exposed. So as I'm working, um, one of the reasons why we kind of use the glue as, as part of our design element, one is for the texture, it just gives us some interesting texture on our design. It also provides a really nice kind of contouring line kind of effect, and so it's just kind of your basic line shape. So you could, you could definitely do the project without the glue lines, but I think it's a lot more interesting to do it with. So I'm going to continue to add color. And I think I'm going to actually go over my glue lines. And you're going to see that nice texture start to come up there. Remember, texture is anything that explains to you how it feels. So if something is not flat on the surface, if it's raised up, it has a texture. Depending on what it is, might depend on what kind of texture it has. It could have a soft texture. It could have a rough texture. And I am somewhat of a texture freak. I really like texture. And when I was a little girl, I used to get in all kinds of trouble when I would go shopping with my mom. She would say, Angie, whatever you do, do not touch anything when we get in the store. And I would say, okay. And she'd go, so you know you're not supposed to touch it. I, was, I got it. I'm not supposed to touch anything. And then we would walk in and there would be some furry little really soft something or another and I would just have to go touch it. So. You might be a texture person too, if you're one of those people that has to go over and feel and see how things feel. I'm still that way today. I still get in trouble with my mom for doing that. All right, so as I am finishing up my color here, I've just kind of done the forehead and around the eyes a little bit. I am going to start working on blending some other colors in. Now, keep in mind that pirates are out in the sun all day. They've got very tanned, kind of leathery kind of skin. So right now I've just kind of got a peach color on, but I'm going to actually come in here and start adding in and mixing some other colors inside. And this is a good thing to do, especially, you know, think about where you would see shadows on the face and you can kind of come in and start doing that. Um, you know, they might also be sunburned, so it might not, not necessarily just be, you know, brown that you might want to add, but you could also add some, some pink kind of colors to the skin. But keeping in mind that they are pirates, you know, don't go too pink. They're not very girly. And speaking of girls, you know, you could also do a um, girl pirate. I, um, I have an example I'll show you here in a second of another one that um, a friend of mine did, and she did a girl pirate. 
So I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just kind of adding some color here and there, wherever I would think there might be a shadow. Whenever you're trying to decide that, you need to kind of decide where is the sun coming in, where is it hitting the face. So in my picture that I've got going here, I'm saying that the sun is coming in from this direction. So I'm going to have, it's going to be lighter on this side, a little darker on this side. So you would definitely have shadows on the sides of the face. So I'm coming in with that and adding some shadows in there. You could also come in and you can either use white to kind of highlight or to add those lighter places or you could even use a yellow, which I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of a yellow and kind of show where the sun might be kind of hitting on the face. Kind of highlight some of those areas. Now, when you are working with oil pastels, there are several ways that you can use oil pastels. You can, you could leave it just like this if you wanted to, or you can also come in and you can blend with your finger. And I like to do that. It adds, just kind of makes it look a little different. But when you're doing this, I mean, you really have to push with your finger. And sometimes the, uh, it's going to get your finger a little bit dirty, but that's okay. It's also going to start to kind of roll the oil pastel up a little bit. And you may have to do several applications to where you rub it and then you come back and you add a little more color and then you rub a little bit more and kind of work in that way but it gives you a really nice look, a really even kind of coated look. Instead of having all these little black places that show, you can really cover up that black paper. And you know, something you might want to do is you might want to leave some of them showing in some places and make it a little more smooth than others. I kind of like the effect that you get with the black showing, but I am going to kind of smooth my highlights in a little bit here. And don't forget that you also want to come in, don't forget, you know, that jewelry and add some really bright colors there so that those really stand out too. And I need to do my pirate's eyes because I think he looks a little, he looks kind of like a skeleton right now because he's just got these holes in his head. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come in and add the white part of the eye first and when I think of a pirate, I think of brown eyes, but I think my pirate's going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to give my pirate some green eyes, really make them stand out. He's going to have green eyes like me. And remember also, especially if you did your eyes really big, like you were supposed to, that you can also come in, you know, most irises on the eye are not one solid color. They are typically have many colors kind of inside there. If you um, ever get a mirror and you can look at your eye and you've got all kinds of colors in there. I've actually got blue and a little bit of brown and some green. So, you know, don't be shy whenever you're adding your color, especially if you've got all this room to work with. Come in there and add some extra color in there. Now, as far as your pupil goes, you can actually just kind of leave the pupil because it's already black and you've got that nice texture on there. Something else you might want to think about is going back over, like if you did a scar like I did, you might want to kind of darken that up. You could darken it with a little bit of red, maybe kind of make it look kind of yucky and bloody a little bit. All right, I'm also going to come in here and add just a little bit of that red that we talked about. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then I'm going to rub it in a little bit too. All right, so I'm going to kind of leave it up to you to finish the rest of your pirate because we need to move on to the next part of our project, which will be starting on our map. So I'm going to leave you with this. And you can kind of continue working on that. And you might want to just kind of listen as I'm starting on the map process. Or you could, um, you know, if you could pause the TV. If you have that DVR, that's fun. All right, so we're going to start on maps. I did not mention to you about this kind of paper. If you don't have some paper that looks this color, 
You can always use, if mom has any um, grocery store bags, you can use that. If you've got, um, I'm trying to think what else you could po possibly use, just white paper, and you could, you know, make it brown when you start adding color to it. So if you don't have something that's already this color, you can make it that color, so you can modify if you need to. And um, the first thing that I want us to do is remember that pirates maps or treasures, treasure maps especially were, you know, they were not all pristine and rolled up and where they were supposed to be and all neat and nice. They have been stuffed in clothes, they've been stuffed in pockets, they've been hidden under things. So they are going to be very crinkled and wrinkly and irregular shaped, all right? So I do not want your map to look like this because this is way too clean and nice and regular looking. So we want to change your edges. So the first thing that I want you to do when you start working on your map is I want you just to start tearing your edges and make it really an irregular kind of shape. So we don't want geometric shapes here. We want very freeform kind of irregular shapes. And try not to tear off too much of it though because then it doesn't leave you very much room. So I'm gonna kind of get a shape about like this. I'm just going to barely tear some of these edges off here because I don't want it to be too little. All right, now, once I've got that, we're not going to need those anymore. And I've got my irregular shape, and I'm ready to start working on my uh, map. Now, I want you to remember, you're going to need a pencil for this part. I want you to really have fun with this, and I want you to think about what would a treasure map kind of consist of. You know, it's not like a normal map. So, but it would have some of those same elements as a normal map. So I want you to kind of think about that. Um, so typically maps are used for geography and they tell you how to get from one place to another. They tell you how long it'll take, how many miles, that kind of stuff. Our map is going to be more of a, you're going to start here, you're going to go there. X marks the spot kind of a map. So I want you to think about what type of you know, where would a buried treasure be? Is it going to be on an island? Is it going to be up in the mountains? And wherever it is going to be, you want to kind of think about that. So whenever I think of a buried treasure, I think of, you know, that it would probably be out on some little remote island somewhere. So usually that means that it's going to be surrounded by water if it's an island. So I would add my water you can also add, you know, maybe some clouds up in the sky, that type of thing. But I want you to think of some fun things that you can add to your map. You know, maybe you want to add um, whirlpools and maybe some booby traps and maybe um, some quicksand and those types of obstacles that they used to try to, you know, kind of put in the way so that people couldn't come in and steal their treasure. So I want you to add some of those things. Um, typically on maps, um, you know, water is depicted as being blue, um, really grassy areas are being, you know, sometimes they are, they change actually with diff different kinds of maps, but, you know, a real deep green sometimes, sometimes it's even red. I've even seen that in a map before. All right, so I am adding streams and I'm adding, I think I'm gonna add up here, I'm gonna have a skeleton cave and I'm gonna have a little skeleton on here. And maybe that's, you know, maybe some different kind of elements like that. And, you know, definitely lots of brush because it's an island, so you would have lots of trees and things like that. Now, don't put tons of trees, because remember, maps don't actually draw out every single little tree, but they draw kind of the idea of a tree. So they might have a few little things here. Something else that I would really like for you to think about adding to your map is going to be your compass rows, or at least your, your north, south, and east, west that gives you some kind of a directional. So I want you to add that. In my one that I did previously, I just kind of tucked it up here in the corner, and you can do that, but you could put it anywhere really on your map. So I think I'm gonna change mine and put mine down here. And you can make this really ornate, or you can make it, you know, just pretty basic. 
Remember that north is always going to point up towards the top, south towards the bottom. Your, your west is always going to be here on your left and the east to the right. And I'm going to leave it like that. Now, we're going to kind of move on really quick here. Um, oh, you know what? One thing I did want to show you is I got a book from the library here at school. And it had some really great ideas on ways to show different kinds of textures. You know how we were talking about textures in earlier in the segment? You know, you can't always have something that shows you the actual feel of the texture. So when I feel this, it's smooth. But by looking at it, it creates visual texture. So these are some things that would be really, really great to add to your map. So think about how you want to add those things. And over here, you would have a key, or you would have, sometimes we call it a legend, that explains what those different things might mean. So, you know, maybe on your map, you've got, you probably wouldn't have an orchard, but you would probably have grassy areas. You might have a cemetery. You might have a swamp. So those are some things that you might want to think about adding. Um, adding to your picture, a bridge or a river, probably not any highways. We don't want it to be that easily accessible. All right, so keep those kinds of things in mind. And we're going to start the coloring process. And for this, you can actually kind of use a couple of things. Um, one thing that I did use is I darkened up the very edges of my map. And you can actually do that using your um, black oil pastel. So just kind of darken up your edges. And once you get that finished, we are going to add some color using the watercolor paints. And you don't have to paint everything, but you are working fairly small. So I want you to kind of keep in mind as you're getting started what you're going to make, you know, different colors. And I just want you to kind of get your color, you know, laid in there for different areas. Making it really colorful. You don't have to do everything. Just like in my example here that I was showing you earlier. You know, this up here, I just left the paper color, and you can do that as well. So after you get finished painting everything, the last thing that I want you to do is take one of your, maybe not really a black, but a brown would work pretty good, and you're just going to kind of rub it over everything. And remember, that's after you have it dry. Then the next thing that I'm going to have you do is you're going to take it. I want you to fold it in half in a few places, and I want you to tear some holes in it. So you're going to fold it in half, and then you're going to just kind of tear a little piece off, all right? That's also going to kind of give it some oldness and some weathered looking kind of places on it. And then the last thing you're going to do is I want you to crumble it all up. All of my kids go, no! But yes, crumble it all up because it's going to make it look really nice and old. And those places where you had rubbed the oil pastel on there, you can kind of smooth your, your, your wrinkles out and go over them and it's going to actually make your wrinkles stand out even better. Once you get finished, you can take your um, pirate picture that you have all finished, and you can take your map, and you can attach the two together. And this is a fabulous, fabulous project to hang up on the wall. All right, let's do our art quote for the day. Learning never exhausts the mind. Leonardo da Vinci. Before I let you go, I had promised you that I was going to show you the picture that my friend had done that was of the girl pirate, and she's got the cutest little parrot on here so I wanted to show you guys this so girls out there you don't have to do a boy pirate you can definitely do a girl pirate and add all those nice details she's got some really nice like a little headband here and her curly hair and she's also got the Jolly Roger showing a little bit in her background so I hope that you had as much fun with this as I did now go out and make some amazing art